Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So today I want to focus on dispatchers. Now I know that dispatchers have earned a really bad reputation among drivers and that's because of the lack of transparency and let's face it, all the lies. So I'm here to go over the five most common lies that dispatchers tell drivers. Ready? Let's go! As you already probably know, we are a small carrier, which means that we don't have separate departments for each side of the business. So I am kind of a fleet manager, a compliance specialist, a company psychologist, and of course, a dispatcher. Aha! Dispatcher. You know what the D stands for? Despicable, deplorable, deceitful. Okay, okay, okay. I know that dispatchers are not the most popular players in this industry and I can understand why. But in the spirit of transparency, I want to tell you about the good, the bad and the ugly of the lies the dispatchers tell and how I work. So let's get started. Lie number one. Oh, don't worry. As soon as you're unloaded, I'll have another load waiting for you so that you don't have to wait around. Yes, this is a lie and I never tell it. There will be no load waiting for you once you get unloaded. Are you sure you should be saying this out loud, despicable dispatcher? Yes, but that being said, I will work my butt off to get you a great load as soon as possible, which is not so difficult in this market, as soon as I get those clean bills of lading. So the the question is probably why don't I book loads while you still have product in your trailer? The easy answer is reputation. At unloading things happen, rejections, overages, shortages, and when a rejection happens and you have product that's left over on your trailer, I have to call the broker and find out what has to be done with that product. This means that you cannot move until a decision has been made by the broker and their client. And trust me, this makes me just as angry as you who is sitting in the truck because time is money and every moment that you spend just sitting in one spot, we're all losing money. You're losing money, we're losing money, it's just a pain in the butt. But to explain, if I booked that next load for you and all of a sudden on this load you have product that's rejected, I have to cancel that load. And load cancellations earn a bad reputation. So I would rather get those clean bills of lading and then as soon as I get them, get on the phone and start finding that new load. Lie number two. Oh yeah, you'll get loaded as soon as you get to the shipper. Now most of the time this is a lie and the funny part, it's a lie told by brokers to the dispatchers. When I call on a load, I ask the questions. Is the load ready? Is the product there? How fast does the shipper load? And in return, I'll get, oh yeah, the load is ready right now. Go ahead and pick it up. It's ready for you. They'll load you super quick. And then we get stuck like we did right after Thanksgiving for 28 hours. So why don't you just call the shipper? Is that so hard? No, of course it's not hard, but many times they won't pick up their phone. So I'm left with a voicemail and a voicemail will not get me where I need to be. So instead I have learned to search up facilities on Google Maps and I start reading reviews left by other drivers who've had experience there. Now will good reviews or bad reviews tell the whole story? Absolutely not. I'll give you the example of that load after Thanksgiving. The reviews were stellar, but we still got stuck for 28 hours. Now I also created a personal database of shippers and receivers we have worked with in the past. I put reviews there, I put the loading times, the average rating, and basically when I book a driver on a load, I am honest, even if it's bad. After all, lying to a driver causes mistrust and that causes big problems in the long run. Lie number three. What do you mean your GPS is showing you 1,500 miles? My system is showing me 200 miles from California to Texas. Yes, I know this is an over-exaggeration, but this is a lie that dispatchers do tell. They underestimate the miles. That's why to eliminate the possibility of mistrust, we pay by odometer readings. I will keep repeating this. What is the benefit of lying to you? Making more money? Exactly, you evil deceiver! Yes, maybe in that moment we're going to make more money, but instant gratification always has its problems. In the long run, this mistrust that was built will cause the driver to leave, and for good reason. This means that we as a company then have to fill in this position, and finding a driver is not always easy. Time is money. Again, transparency, transparency, transparency. Super important. Lie number four. Yeah, I know 
know it's a thousand six hundred miles, but you can make it in two days. I believe in you. Uh, eight hundred miles a day is not possible unless you're violating your logbook. Now I know this was an over-exaggeration for the most part, but many dispatchers will book you on loads that are pretty tight. This is why when I book a load, I take into consideration the weather, the road conditions, the speed limits in the states you're going to be passing through, your hours of service, and any road closures on the way. If it's a tough time-pressing load, I will tell you it's a tough time-pressing load but I try to avoid those loads because reputation. See, if you feel pressed for time, you are likely to speed and speeding can cause a lot of unnecessary issues. For example, violations and in the worst case scenario, accidents. Number one, violations show up on our company record, which means our reputation, kaput. Number two, accidents, which is something we want to prevent at all costs. So booking a time pressing load is something I don't do often, but I do do it anyway. And the biggest thing there is communication. We have to have communication to understand whether this is something that can be done. But just booking a tough load for the sake of money, why do I need this? I would rather find a more laid back load that ensures safe transit and eliminates the possibility of any violations or God forbid accidents. Lie number five. Oh yeah, you can call me anytime. I'm here 24 seven to help you out. Hey, Bob, I'm so happy it's the weekend I finally get to turn this damn phone off. Yeah, I can imagine how annoying that is when it happens. You try to call a dispatch or you have an issue and no one picks up. Now, I try to be available 24 hours, seven days a week, but I'm just one human being. I keep my phone on at night, I put the ring on the highest volume, and I still sometimes miss that call at 3 a.m. So the truthful answer is yes, I try to be here 24 seven to answer any calls but I can't guarantee that my body, which is unfortunately not a robot, will wake up at 3 a.m. even if my phone is blowing up. See, lying lazy loser. So to minimize this issue in our company, we give out three numbers, my phone number and the phone numbers of my two business partners. Third time's a charm, right? Now, before I leave you, I want to give you a little bit of insight. The reason I work differently from other dispatchers is not because I am Mother Teresa. Trust me, I am far from that. It is because I have different goals than a hired dispatcher. A regular dispatcher is usually hired by a company to find loads and help drivers with those loads. And these people usually make a percentage of the load. So what do they care about? They care about how much does that load pay and what is their piece of the pie? Oh, don't lie. You care about the same thing. Absolutely. No secret there whatsoever. I care about how much the load pays but I also have skin in the game. After all, I'm dispatching for my company, which means I care about the company's reputation and its success. And reputation is not built by making you drive at neck breaking speed so you can get a violation or even worse into an accident or by ignoring your phone calls so that you can be stuck in no man's land while your coolant is leaking all over the pavement. And of course, a reputation is not built by trying to cut your income to our benefit because that affects us in the long run, as I mentioned before. Now, a hired dispatcher doesn't have skin in the game. They're only looking at their profit and they are not carrying any risk. So this is the difference. I'm not a saint. I'm just good at calculating risk versus reward. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one.